Play that one again. There we go. Let's play that one one more time. traditional uh, gaming song from I believe the Yurok, Yurok tribe. I have a couple of links to share with you all and it got cold in here so I'm <laughs> adding a layer. The focus today uh, among other things is the the artifacts that I sent home which I put on California 14 and I'm going to meet on the we're gonna uh, meet on the table there and I'll share some share some notes I'm gonna share the already did share the live link or I shared the link to the live stream on our Google classroom and it'll take you to the the digital document of that and the digital document has links to a secondary website which I'm also going to share with you where you can uh, learn a lot more, not just about California First Nations, the American Indians and the, the first first people to to live in what is now the United States. And you can, it's, the, the images are beautiful and you get nice, big, um, high resolution, um, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, I, where is, oh, I think I, I read, so I read the, the story of the Rough Face Girl, which is a legend in the tradition of Cinderella type um, Cinderella type story 
Uh, so that will be released later today, I think, 1 o'clock for Read Aloud. So uh, I think that's the big stuff. I, oh, I want us to remember, you know, this chart here says shelter, clothing, food, stories, uh, keeping clean. Like, our, I think this should be health, health and medicine, uh, music, dance, and celebration. So the music that we just heard, the rhythm, the rhythm to that song really spoke to me. And I, I don't know the Yurok language, so I don't know what the words are that they're chanting, but um, I definitely got the, the sense that it was a celebration. Uh, all right, so tools. I, uh, I sent on these sticks. Uh, there's a link. Um, there's a link I'm going to share with, uh, with you about how to um, play the game of staves. Uh, my sticks are are painted, but you know you could you could paint anything you want. Uh, you can make usually there are, there are sticks that are um, found in nature, and this is not a color of a stick that you find in nature. But uh, what else do we have? Oh, that's just the big stuff. Uh, I'm gonna need I think I'm gonna need my notes. I'm not gonna use this because this is my chart paper markers. What I'm gonna use instead are my smaller markers, the ones that you all use. Uh, when we do, uh, what is it, Zoom? Yeah, when we do Zoom. So go ahead and get uh, get this page out. We're not doing, not doing bird bingo yet. That's coming later. All right, so yeah, California 14 and 15. And what I've done is this link. So this is what I, oh, I need the markers. This, please. So you are going to uh, yep, just follow along uh, as best you can. If you wish to take notes like I'm about to, go for it. Uh, see if I can bring it closer to my closer to my book, though. Let's see. All right. Oh, that's up. This is down. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Um, I never thought of this. Wow. wow. Look at that. Hey, that looks pretty good. Oops. All right, that looks even better. Ooh, all right. Sometimes it's good to try new things. Uh, so I've got, we've got uh, this, right? One, two, three, four, five. So go ahead and number those. Uh, I left, again, on your Google Classroom, I left a link to this, and as you can tell, or hopefully you can tell, uh, this. Can we zoom out, Mr. Corbin? We can zoom out 50. There we go. So this document, this uh, this is a live document. This is what I printed for all of you. And at the top of it, what you don't have here is a link. And if you click this link, you will go to this page. And this is where I... This is how I obtained. This is how I obtained all the uh, all the images here. It's from a, a site called Infinity of Nations, I believe. Uh, if you look on the right, I believe all uh, all of North America, even some Central, if I'm not mistaken, there might be some Central. Oh yeah, there's Mesoamerican Caribbean. Uh, so there's lots of different different tribes. I I went to the uh, because it's ours, right? I I selected all the ones from the. California, uh, what, what is now California, um, and geographically the west here. So you'll see Utah, or no, yeah, Ute, which I, that's how they got the name, Utah. The Great Salt Lake is there, the Rocky Mountains. So the focus for us is everything west of the Rocky Mountains, specifically against the Pacific Ocean. So that's why we started California Changes, California Geography with um, knowing the land because uh, Baja, California, is the southern or what Baja Lower, southern part of our our state, what's now the uh, state of California, um, and these tribes, Karuk, Shasta, Hoopa, Wiat, Yah, Yahi, Pomo, Yokuts. As you can see, um, Ohlone is not included in this uh, map, but it is. It is you know included here. Um, it just goes to show you that not every map. Not every map contains every nation. Um, 
both blah blah blah. Okay, so back to this. Uh, what we have here, we have so this is one, we'll call that one. This will be two, which makes sense because there's the two arrows there. Three, four, and this down here is five. Okay. So first, whenever we look at uh, artifacts, if we're in a, a, in a museum, uh, anytime we see something, you know, we start to ask, we ask ourselves what we notice. Okay, what we notice, what we think, what we wonder. So for this one, let's go back to my, my document. So here, right, those containers, and I assume that's, I guess what I'll need to do is, thanks for bearing with me, folks. Go to the website, and I have to find, so I'll have to go to Infinity of Nations from the American Indian Museum. Please go. It's because you're already open another window. There it is. Okay, so I'll close this. Nope. Close this. Here we go. So the item I'm looking for, is, yeah, it's this one here. All right. So this uh, affords me a closer look at it. And what I'm noticing is it is it looks woven. You know, there's some texture. You see the texture there? So I'm noticing, number one, and uh, again, this is this is just practice. Right, we, we practice looking at things, and uh, I'm gonna predict that it, look, it looks, well, first of all, it looks natural. Natural fibers, natural, right? It looks like natural fibers. It looks like it was made by humans. Human made. It, uh, you know, when I think about my, oh, I should have this up. When I think about that chart I showed you, shelter, clothing, food, all of this, right? What I don't think though, I don't think this is, um, for all these things, whoops, for all these things, I don't think it's a, I don't, it's definitely not clothing or shelter. It's way too small for that. It's sort of a tool, right? I can see it being a basket, but again, it's not, clay is natural, but this looks like a woven basket. Human made, woven, right? So here I have, it looks natural, uh, human made and woven. I, if I had to guess, if I had to guess after the, it was woven, it looks like something else was put onto it. Do you see that? Uh, we, you know, we were talking about sap. Uh, with the wild robot. And this looks almost like they added something to the woven material to make it uh, maybe maybe stronger. Human made woven and I'm going to put sap question mark to make it dot 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 stronger question mark. I'm not sure. All right, so that's one. Uh, the second one, uh, what I call two, this one's pretty straightforward. If you, if you look at that, a lot of you are going to see this and, and think uh, arrows. So absolutely. Uh, I think that's that's a safe bet. So one, two, three, four, five. We have five, so I want to spread out. One, two, three, four, five will be maybe here. Um, so what's left? Four, two, three, four. So there's three, so maybe... Three in the middle, yep. Two up here, and four maybe there. All right, so the second item, they look like arrows, right? And arrows, when we look at our chart, we, arrows are um, bow and arrow, those are tools, right? So we don't see the bow, and usually, Usually, when we see these arrows, a lot of you will think of, uh, a, you know, a bow that looks maybe something like this, right? You know, I looked in that uh, that book of survival. Um, what's it called? Survival Strategies? That's an awesome book. I got that thing out. Okay, so, and then what happens is a lot of uh, uh, hunters, 
when hunters use arrows, the arrow points toward the bow and there's something in the backs that, you know, this, this looks, uh, these look like feathers to me. So a lot of, uh, a lot of groups used feathers to help um, the arrow do something. Uh, and then here, see, this is very important. The, oh, can't zoom in on a piece of paper, can I? I guess what I can zoom in on. All right, so let's go, go back. back. And where are my arrows here? Oh, there they are. So what I'm going to do is, if you look, whoa, go back. Oh, for goodness sake. Come back here. Okay. Zoom. All right, if you look, if you look at the tip of the arrow, this is a better, that's probably a better example. Uh, what you might notice is that something is woven around the tip between the base of the wood and that the arrow shaft there, um, that looks like it's wood. And this, that doesn't look wood to me. So I wonder what the arrow, and they call that the arrow head, right? So the, um, the arrows, arrows, um, uh, the shaft is wooden, wooden. Uh, the tip, what's called the arrowhead, is uh, what could it be? What what could that? Oh, I wonder if kids are. Do do do. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so the arrowhead is definitely not. That's definitely not wood. Uh, this was say an advancement. Our all of our ancestors, hundreds, thousands. Thousands of years ago, they found that if they used a, a stone tool, uh, it would uh, help them hunt. It'd be more successful in hunting uh, because the arrow, the, the wooden, the wood, uh, if you just sharpened a piece of wood, that might not go through the hide of the, um, the animal you're trying to hunt. So that's two. Um, oh, so I said hunt, right? So hunt. So the tool, some tools like the basket doesn't help you hunt the animal, but it might, you know, if you're collecting food, the basket will help you um, organize it or preserve uh, food, right? Plants, animals, uh, you could use the baskets for the plants. Uh, the bow and arrow would help hunt animals or track animals. Uh, okay, so let's look what else we have here. So part of our, you know, I, I said earlier, I was feeling cold. I was feeling cold. That right, whoopsie, that right there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so I've got the arrows. I'm going to go back. And where is the, ah, there it is. Now this is a, uh, it's a, that's a blanket. Now, you might not be able to tell from the photo, you know, how large it is, uh, but that if we if we zoom in, you can see the, 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 the material, that's animal, that's animal fur right there. And I wonder, it doesn't look hard, like it doesn't look rough or coarse. Um, it looks, it looks quite soft. So three, we know it's a blanket, that part's a kind of a spoiler. It's a blanket, it is uh, soft, and it is animal, animal skin, question mark. It is, it is animal skin. So here's what I have so far. I know that might be not as easy to read as my chart, but I have, first I have, uh, number one, looks natural, human made, woven, maybe there's some sap on it. Two, uh, the arrows, Wooden shaft, the arrowhead is not wooden. I wonder what material the arrowhead's made out of. Next is the blanket, which is soft, made out of animal skin. And that, you know, that, that would help someone stay warm when it's cold, just like I put my vest on. Now, speaking of, of clothing, though, none of the clothing I'm wearing now, or I don't know if anything I have at all, is as... Mm, Regal. I don't know if you know the word regal. When I think of the word regal, R-E-G, it sounds like eagle, right? Like the bird. 
Uh, and actually, an eagle is a very regal animal. Regal meaning royal, royalty, or, hmm, I want to say fancy, but not fancy and royalty is royalty is a better the better definition or synonym for regal this seems like a um something like you would wear remember i said uh this word where i had celebration oh i didn't write it down okay so clothing right i'm gonna write down regal all right so clothing could be um actually write this down utilitarian I must have got some good sleep last night because I'm getting some uh, third floor, fourth floor words. Utilitarian. Uh, the boots I have are utilitarian. These are not fancy boots. Oh, oh. spilled my water. That's all right. See these? These are not fancy. I wouldn't wear these to uh, a party, like a fancy party. Uh, they're utilitarian. They're strong. Um, they're a little scuffed up because I wear them so much. Um, so utilitarian is an antonym, is not the same as, uh, what did I say, regal? So regal is for like fancy, it's for ser I'm gonna put purple because uh, like regal royalty, like for a ceremony. Right, and a ceremony is a specific kind of celebration. All right, so we're, oh, now, what makes it, now you wonder, well, Mr. Corkin, how do you know just by looking at something um, that it's regal? I'll show you. I'll show you what makes me think it's, uh, it's regal. Look at the care that was taken. This is woven, this is also woven, by the way. Now that blue, I don't know if you can see that, but I don't think that's just, I don't think that's just blue fabric. I think those are blue shells. So that blue shell, um, yeah, I'll put, actually, I think I can do it here. Um, so imagine, so number four, right? The regal, royal, fancy clothing. Um, clothing, clothing, uh, clothing for a ceremony. Oh, I'll put ceremony above. Ceremonial. I'm going to put a question mark because I don't know. I don't know for sure that this was for, you know, a certain ceremony. All I know is that it it's not, this is not utilitarian. I don't think this is something someone would wear every day uh, because the things for, I don't know about you, but the things that I really care about, oh, there's, there's additional colors and beads down on the bottom. If it's something I care about, I don't wear it every day. I don't want it to get worn out. I don't want it to, to, to break or be ruined or to spill something on it, you know? Uh, so there's that one. Uh, and then, so that brings us to, I'll be doing on time. Oh, pretty good. Uh, the last one is uh, this. And speaking of speaking of ceremonial, I'm wondering what uh, what that is. It looks a little bit. If I had to, if I had to guess, if you had to guess what this was, right? What what do you think this is? You know, if I look up here. It's not, it doesn't look like a tool exactly. It does look a little bit like a, uh, a piece of clothing, right? Um, I'm not sure how big it is, but it definitely, you know, since it's here, since it's here next to the, next to this, it does look like a belt, a belt or maybe a headband. It could go over someone's head maybe. Uh, but if you, if you look closely, that's another example of things that are woven into it. Uh, so it does look clothing related. I got the T in blanket. Oh, it's just blanket. All right. So what did I say? Five. Five is uh, belts. 
question mark. So it's woven, definitely woven, woven with um, shells, right? Shells, question mark, those shells. Uh, let's take a look. Oopsie, looks like, oh, that's really sensitive. There we go. Uh, yeah, woven, so woven shells. Um, that looks almost, is it like leather, braided leather maybe? And it goes, yeah, it's really interesting to me. This is the kind of thing, if I was in a museum, I think I'd spend a lot of time at this, at this uh, exhibit. Oh, look at that thing. That looks like the gears of a clock, maybe. Wow. Yeah, these definitely look like buttons. So now I wonder, so all of these, I don't know if you were noticing, as I was zooming around in these, the California Great Basin, um, that, that's the area, right? And those of you who are really observant, there's, there's captions here. Look. So that says Shasta Belt, Circa, CA means, a, CA is our abbreviation for our state, but if you ever see that with a date, I'll put this up here. So if you ever see, ha uh, see, uh, right? So clothing. So I'll do CA circa 18, it said 1860 to 1890. So this is fairly modern compared to some of these artifacts. I know you're saying 1890, Mr. Corcoran. That's when you were born, right? No, 1990, I was in high school. 1890 uh, is, you know, just though 1860, the Civil War. So if you think about Abraham Lincoln and the fight between the North and the South to end slavery, 1860 is Abraham Lincoln's era. So that's how old this belt, this belt was made uh, around the time of Abraham Lincoln and, and the, the, by the Shasta people in California using these materials, horsehair, leather, wool, cloth buttons and thimbles and cotton string. So it's 82 by nine centimeters, 82 centimeters by nine centimeters. So it says about this object. So it's here it says, Northern California native peoples lived near and interacted with the equestrian tribes of the plateau. Equestrian, equestrian. Where can I put anything about equestrian? It's not shelter food, stories, medicine, health. Well, equestrian, those of you who know horses, uh, boy, I don't know where to put it. Over here, maybe? So equestrian is horses. So equestrian. Right? Uh, pedestrians, humans, we walk around. Equestrian is uh, related or pertaining to horses. So there were some some tribes, some native peoples uh, rode horses in the in the plateau. So it says this uh, Shasta belt made from braided horsehair speaks to the trade relationship that exists between the Shasta and the tribes of the southern plateau. The belt incorporates several manufactured pieces: thimbles, brass buttons, red cotton, and a clock gear which the Shasta people probably traded for, traded for. Uh -huh. In addition to pine nuts, buckskin, obsidian, and the marine mollusk shells known as dentalia. All right, and then sometimes, I'm gonna back up here. Sometimes when you click on this, I think it was the bath, was it the basket? Uh, here we go. Boop. All right, so when I clicked on this, this is a Northern Paiute water bottle basket. So I'm gonna give you time, we'll give you time. Um, I'm also, I have three more minutes here. So um, I'm gonna give you, you know, you can follow the links and you can find out more about this. This is the thing right here. This was really interesting to me. Now that's a photograph. Oh, it looks like you can see it okay. So this is a photograph of, uh, it says, where's my caption? Here we go. Uh, the skill, whoops, the skill to make finely woven, watertight, and sometimes pitch-covered twine or coiled water bottles was knowledge crucial to life in the Great Basin. 
regionally and tribally distinct, that means different, the baskets were sought after items of trade among neighbors within and beyond the region. So trade is, is coming up again and again. Trade happen, trade pertains to these uh, baskets and it pertained to that belt. The Southern Paiute, Southern Paiutes rather, the Southern Paiutes traded their pitch water bottles to the Hopi people of the Southwest as did the Southern Ute to the Yikaria Apache. The Owens Valley Paiute traded their basketry bottles to the Yokuts of Southern California, South Central California, as did the Northern Paiute to the Achumawi and other groups in Northern California. Sturdier coiled water carriers made by the North and Southern Ute were favored by Wind River and Snake River Shoshone. So this photograph, and I gotta say this photograph was probably taken around 1890 or 1900. Um, again, right around this time. So these objects, some of these objects were used, created and used by one tribe. Other objects, these like the, the gears, remember, and the clock gears, um, that was traded, you know, among, among peoples. Um, so how do I wrap this up here? Ah, so here's my goal for you. My goal for you is to take what we did. Uh, if you wrote this down before, great. If not, I'll take a photo. Uh, I want you to go to the live document uh, and try to find out more about these belts. Um, this, find out the animal. What animal is that? And here's a math question. How many animal skins were required to make an object that size? Oh, find out the size of all these things too, would you? Um, it's going to be centimeters. So, you know, I, I don't know about you, but inches are what I'm accustomed to uh, speaking about. Uh so the size, yeah, the size of the objects. Uh, the other thing, I didn't want to uh, forget the staves. So these, the staves, uh, what we're going to do with these is um, I'm going to leave the link for you. Uh, what you'll need to do is if you want to uh, paint it a natural color, uh, you have the watercolor paints. Uh, if you want to leave it natural uh, brown, that's fine too. Um, I'll give you the instructions about how to, uh, how to play staves. And how to decorate them uh, soon. So that was, uh, man, that was fun. Uh, I think it was a lot of info. Um, and this is just, as you're going to find, let me, oopsie, let me get back to this. I will leave you with this. When you go to this website, uh, when you go there, what you're going to notice is, uh, look how many objects, you know, I didn't have time or I didn't, I wasn't able to print, you know, I can't print 30 of all of these, but if you if you're the type of person who's into basketry, look at the look at these. Look at that. If you're the type of person who's into like for me the idea of hunting, look at this. What do you think that was? And I got like I've kind of read all this, so I know what these are now. Um, what do you think that was used for? You know, at first I think oh it's a toy. No, that's that's not a toy. That's no that was not. That was not something silly. And then here, this is the thing we uh, we talked about. Remember we talked about having an opening where something might go in, maybe swim into, and then not be able to get out? Uh-huh. And so this, I mean, this, this right here, this is one thing. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. Lots more to say. That thing. Look at that thing. Whoops. What do you think that thing is? What is that? All right. So, and the other thing is you don't, you know, once you've explored the California, if you're interested in other areas, you can also go to Mesoamerica and Caribbean because they have artifacts that people in the Caribbean had. Um, so Infinity of Nation, um, amazing resource. Can't wait to uh, find out from you what you uh, what you learned. Ooh, I got a hustle. We got math. Uh, hope you learned something. Hope I sparked some uh, excitement about learning about the first first peoples of uh, what's now California, United States, etc. Okay, everybody. See you in a little bit. Aloha. Au revoir.